Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be going over the different types of problems in AMC 8 competitions and how you would just prepare for the AMC 8 competition in overall and just do better on it because the AMC 8 competition is this week. So, what we're going to do is first go over the different types of problems that will appear in the AMC 8 and how you should prepare for those. So the first thing that we're going to be going over is counting and probability. Now, this is probably one of the more difficult ones in the beginning problems from probably 1 to 15 in the AMC competition because sometimes counting is just kind of hard to count certain things and you need to manipulate numbers in a weird way. However, I'm going to go over the three methods that appear the most common when you're dealing with counting and probability problems. So the first one, which is used pretty common, is just complementary counting. And if you don't know what complementary counting is, it's taking, instead of looking for what you want, you're counting the stuff that you don't want. So for an example is, let's say you have two quarters, and you want to find the number of possibilities that at least one is heads. So, of course, there are four possible outcomes. There's four possible outcomes because there's two for each coin, heads or tails. And what we're going to do is instead of finding the number of possibilities that there are, there's at least one heads, we're going to actually just look for the number of possibilities where there's just the probability where there's just one, where there's no heads at all, sorry. So the case that there's no heads at all, of course, that's just one case, and that's two tails in a row, which the probability of that is one-half times one-half, which is equivalent to one-fourth. And if we want to find the opposite of that, we just subtract one-fourth from one, which gives us three-fourths. Now the explanation may be kind of complicated. Now, except this gives you a brief idea of what complementary counting can do and what problems you should use them on. However, practicing problems overall, just using practicing counting and probability problems, will help get you a feel for when to use different types of methods. Now the next method I'm going to go over is casework. Now, this isn't used as much in the beginning problems because, of course, they take up casework usually takes up a lot of time and is also kind of known as bashing, except you can use bashing for other stuff. But casework is usually not used, like I said before. However, you can use it if you really don't know what to do, and the only way to solve the problem is by using casework. Now, casework is just setting different cases like case one. How many possibilities are there for case 1? How many possibilities are there for case 2? And then you just add them all up or manipulate them in a certain way. Now the next one, which is probably used also a lot, is just the simple definition of probability. Finding the number of winning possibilities over number of winning over the number of total possibilities. So, overall, that's just simply counting and probability and the three methods that you'll see used the most. Now, this topic is pretty broad because algebra covers basically everything. However, in this case, what I mean by algebra is just setting certain things to x. And you can use this in even geometry problems, and it's extremely useful as long as you know certain geom geometric properties. However, in this case, just setting variables to certain things makes things real, and just in creating equations makes things really easy. Now, if you have a ton of variables, like just like so many variables, usually it's not a good idea to go on with this route because it will take a long time to solve, or you're just not going to solve it at all, and you might make some mistakes along the way too. Now, if you just have like two or three variables, I'd suggest you go on with the algebra route as long as you have enough equations. If you have enough equations, you can create 
a system of equations and you can solve for each of x, y, and z if you do have a z. So algebra, I think, is really useful because you can just set variables and it's simple to solve without thinking much. Now this topic you'll see most likely in more of the end problems of the AMC 8 tests because they're one of the more harder ones and ones that take more creative thinking and thinking out of the box than just using the processes of algebra or just counting. So with geometry, what you really have to do is kind of just think and create diagrams and draw lines to see if there's any connections. Some of the things that I find useful is are similar triangles. Similar triangles I find are extremely useful. Another one is angles. Now you won't have to really use trigonometry much. I don't see it used a lot. One of the things that you might have to know is what the relationship with a 30-60-90 triangle. And there's some other simple principles that you probably need to know, such as circles and some of those properties about circles. Again, this is one of the less used, but it's also used and sometimes seen in AMC 8 problems, and this is number theory. Number theory includes things like finding remainders and GCDs and LCMs, those kinds of things and really just manipulating numbers in a certain way. Some of the problems ask, for example, how many days somebody calls somebody in a year. That doesn't really matter, but just examples like that. Number theory is basically just, you know, finding remainders and using mod, essentially, modulus. Now, another thing you might want to know with number theory is that the AMC8 problems, they really like to include the year in some of the problems. For example, there are some problems that in 2018 AMC that just included 2018. Now, the reason why you'll need to know this is because some of them require that you prime factor the number itself, the year number itself, such as this 2016 problem which needed you to factor 2016 in order to solve it. So the prime factorization of 2019 is actually really simple. It's 3 and 673. And considering that this is a really big number, I'm predicting that it's not going to be used. However, you still might have to know this because knowing it is pretty useful, even not just for AMC 8 for other competitions too, because they also like to include the year in some of their problems. Now overall, what you want to do with your AMC 8 practicing is just practice certain areas that you don't really know, or just practice an AMC 8 test in general. Just doing that will help you know which areas you'll need help in, and you can use that information to help yourself get better at the AMC 8. So overall, I'm, all I'm going to say is just practice problems because that's the best way to learn when to use certain methods and what, what to do. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Also, keep an eye out for my AMC 8 2019 solutions. I will be adding those too along with AMC AOPS. However, I'll be providing videos on each of the solutions mainly just the harder problems like 24 and 25. However, I'll probably also include some other problems. So make sure to keep an eye out for those problems. Thanks for watching.